All right, so today's video, as I'm pretty sure you all realize from the title, is on my newest toy that I picked up. For anyone who doesn't know and can't read, it's a Piet, or a Projector Infantry Anti-Tank, made by the British Second World War, sort of a make it as quickly as possible, figure something out that could attack tanks better than a boys and tank rifle which was pretty much useless against most of the armor at that point in time anyways so this part of the video is just going to be the introduction to it sort of explaining the parts you might notice I don't have any of the uh, material on it it's being washed right now it does have two uh, slings on it they're just the standard ones you see on the uh, Lee Enfields also. It's got the second type of monopod on it. Uh, the earlier one wasn't adjustable. This one here I could show you after. It is. Alright, to start up, I don't have any bombs for it, unfortunately. And <clears throat> it's funny because here in Canada, this is basically completely unregulated, which is understandable for me, but some people don't realize things like that. This is pre-1946, so controlled goods do not, or does not, uh, I guess, apply to it. So what happens is it is basically just a big spring the ammunition, if you got the explosive stuff, it would fall under Explosives Act, and therefore it would be illegal for me to own. But just launching it, if I were able to get the practice rounds for it, wouldn't be a problem either. Now, if it was something that was made after 46, for example, an RPG-2 or an RPG-7, even though it's just a tube with a firing pin in it, I could still get in trouble if I have a fully functioning one from the RCMP well in trouble from the RCMP anyways getting back to the Piat itself here it is a bit of a pain in the ass to work with everything you heard in videos isn't really wrong some of the maneuvers some of the stuff that they were showing in it in those videos especially the experts or so I like to call them internet experts that uh, explain how to use this. First off, anytime you see somebody pulling the trigger on one of these things with nothing in the front of it, they're not an expert. Anytime you see somebody putting it on the shoulder, as if they were firing a bazooka and or law, they're not an expert. They're just somebody that a show needed to pay a little or a small quantity of money for to show you something that you probably would have never seen any uh, in any other aspect. I'll go over how this thing works, sort of. And right now I'm just going to go over the basic parts of it. And I'll just try to give you guys a quick video on that. Alright, starting off, like I said, in the back there's usually a butt plate made out of rubber and inside a piece of a canvas, I guess, butt, pla uh, butt pad. That's being cleaned right now, I do not have it on there. Also, there's usually a canvas piece going around the top to protect your face and hands from cold when you're using it in colder weather. There's no real other use for it other than uh, that. The sight you see in black is a, uh, I guess, indirect fire type sight. So that is not what you would use for attacking tanks directly. What you would usually use is the rear sight there and this sight here. You've got 70 and 100 graduations on here. And you basically line up the center dot on that in the center of one of the holes here at whatever ranger tank is at 
and you pull the trigger and hope it works. As I said, I've never tried one of these before, but supposedly they weren't the most accurate toys out there. And they supposedly kick like a mule. Alright. Next on the list of things we'll go over is right in the front here. This is a spigot part of it. Basically, just a bar with a hardened piece of steel at the front here that's screwed into it. And if you see it from here, right there's a firing pin. Inside the mortar bomb or whatever, piet bomb, you have something that looks like a 12 gauge cartridge. Just the brass ends on the high brass ones you've ever seen. Basically two parts, one goes over the other part, and there's a primer on the end of it. And there's ballastite or some other smokeless powder inside. That goes right up the back of the tail on the, the bomb itself. And it sits in this tray. When you pull the trigger on these things here, this goes right up through the tail of the bomb hits that charge, the charge separates the back and the front, the front stays in the actual round, the back pushes up against this, cocks it back into its firing position, and exits the back of the uh, back of the uh, tube. As I said, this is a mod pod on that window. So you could raise the height on it, make it more comfortable for use. It sort of catches you off guard, this thing, because it is so heavy. You're looking at about a 31 pound toy. Everything on it is basically metal, no aluminum at all. What you see here is something you don't really hear much about. Probably because most people don't even think about it. And if you've seen the episode of Sons of Guns where they fire one of these, that is their main mistake, apart from all the Hollywood magic that they put into firing the rounds. These bars here, or these little grooves here, when this is cocked right back, it goes inside. Inside the tube. So it's a completely open space here. Right now, this thing that you see on here, I could remove it for you so that I could but it's a subcaliber uh, attacher, uh, attachment for the practice round. It's just a little tray that allows you to fire the practice rounds out of it. Mine's got a broken uh, hook on the front. I don't think it'll change much, but we'll have to see. All right, so when this is right in, the way you would load this is you take the round nose first after you've uh, put the after you've put the uh, fuse in it, you put a nose first through there, and then you bring it down here. On the back of the bomb, on the back of the practice bomb, there's a little metal clip. It looks like a little ring that connects to the back of the bomb. That slides in here, and the way it's made is it holds it so that when the spigot comes through, it doesn't move forward the bomb. Therefore, it hits it with enough force that it uh, is able to fire rather than just bouncing the bomb forward and possibly having it fall off the end or just not firing with the round. So that goes there and when it fires the clip stays there, the bomb takes off, explodes. This is recocked if you're holding it well enough and then you're able to put another bomb in and push down on it. If the old clip is still in there, it'll just fall at the bottom here, and there won't be a problem. One of the big issues with this is it's got to be really clean, because there's not much tolerance between the hole and this thing here, so if there's any dirt that blocks any of this, it'll slow it down to a point where it might not fire your uh, round. This, as I was showing you, is just screwed on. 
It's just a hardened piece. This isn't hardened. This is. All right. You'll see something goofy on these things here. It's a little cork. When you carry this in cocked and unsafe, with no bomb in the, in the front here, when it was in that position there to keep dirt and anything from getting inside, you just close it with that. And when you're ready to use it, you pop it out, put the bomb in it, take it off safe, and fire. Another thing you'll see a lot of times on videos with these things here where the people are showing it off, they'll install a bomb on the spigot. Good thing with the practice bombs that they don't actually have a cartridge in them because installing it on the firing pin like that is just looking for trouble. It will fire most likely with a real one and the tail section of the bomb will probably take off your fingers. You can undo the bipod, uh, the monopod on here just by unscrewing this. I could show you in another video eventually. I don't want to keep this one too long or going too long. As I said before, the trigger on here, it is designed to be fired with two fingers. So you have your two, your hand there. You're British, you're only right-handed, there's no left-handed soldiers. Anyways, at that point in time, you were taught to fire right-handed. So, two fingers on the, on the trigger, and you pull it with that. Now, I'm just going to show you the, the back end of this and how it sort of works. I'm going to show it more in detail the next time for the next video because I'll show you how it's cocked properly and other things. This, as you see here, there's a bayonet, um, I guess, groove or whatever in it. When you're cocking this, you'll see it that you put your foot your feet on there and you pull a little bit on your tube which opens it like this as you see it sort of spin here and now when it's in this position here it's unlocked this is when you pull as hard as you can until you hear a click and then you bring it back in you find you can't see it well here put the pin in there and you lock it back into position and now that's ready to fire if you had cocked it like that there are people who are stupid they mention it also in the training manuals at the beginning when people are practicing they will make the mistake but nowadays most people just don't know how to use it like you'll see that one Israeli guy on discovery or whatever the hell channel it was where he cocks this and leaves this sticking out. The problem with that is when it comes back in, well, apart from the fact that he was holding like a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher instead of an actual piet, comes back in and it doesn't, the pin that's there doesn't actually go in the groove here because it's sitting like this, it'll slam into the, just a ring around here and that's going to damage it. In fact, this one here, when I got it, earlier today it had that problem it wouldn't you couldn't caulk it I ended up having to take out the uh, the whole piece field strip it basically and then take some force off with a spring and sort of wedge a screwdriver to pop the two parts off eventually I'm going to fix it but in the meantime it'll just have to be like that Anyways, I hope that was um, a good quick view of how this works. I don't know if I showed you the safety on it. I can try to flip it around a bit maybe. There's not much to see. It's just a switch. But I don't know if you'll see it. I might lift it up. Anyways, it's hard to see. The safety's here. 
safety cannot be put on without actually um, cocking the rifle or cocking the piet. Anyways, so that's just a quick walk around with it. And my next video I'll get into how it's used and some of the things that you don't actually see in any of the videos on discovery or history or any of that. Anyways, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Also, if anyone's got items for these things here, let me know. I'll see if I'm uh, interested in anything. Alright, so thanks. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments. And uh, hopefully I'll have a new video up soon.